the women's strata bianca 136 kilometer course very similar final 10 to 15 kilometers if not more for the women it's the same as the men's course they've still got the toll fair climb as well as the iconic climb up to siena to piazza del campo with 500 meters at like 12 percent on the paving stones so it's good i like that in a sense because it's you can compare and contrast the finales uh, between the men's and the women's to see how the different tactics play out. Start list, super strong for the women's. Van Leuten, returning winner. Anna van der Breggen, in app, probably the best rider in the world at the moment in magic form. Mavi Garcia did well last year. Utra Ludwig, good at Amelia on a hard finish. Cavalli, Mariana Vos can never be counted out. SD Works, absolutely stacked. We already mentioned that in previous <laughs> previous <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Nee Fisher Black, Vandenbroek Black, uh, Mulman Passio, Cicchini, Vollering, obscene, obscene team. At least Longo Borghini, Van Dijk, Cordon Rago is a pretty nice team from Trek, maybe the second strongest all round. Lippert and DSM, Lippert probably their leader, maybe with Flotti Mackay, Niwiadoma, Barnes, uh, Michaela Harvey for Canyon Shram, and Branauer. Probably the leader for Chera Tizit, WNT Pro Cycling. I missed anyone out, Benji, from the favourites um, that you thought was a chance today? No, I don't really think so. I think those are the names that we were looking at beforehand. And throughout the race, it looked like it slowly but surely folded that way. But there were also some names up there that we not didn't necessarily see as the old ultimate favourites in the end. So that's the course. That's the main start list. Live pictures started with about 40 minutes left in the race. Obviously a shame. Um, it's got to be, it, it should be 90 minutes plus, preferably, especially with a race like Strade. So we can't speak with too much depth and confidence about what happened before that, but we've got coverage. We found info via other ways what happened in the uh, race before that 40. So Benji will run you through that now uh, and bring you up to where the race really kicked off in the last 25. Yes, before that actually happened, before the last 25 kilometers, we had plenty of action already. Groups opening up, groups attacking, riders attacking solo, duos attacking. And the first duo that really shined in the race was Nee Fisher Black attacking and then Kopecky joining that. But, um, well, if they were riding both in their original jersey, they'd have both have purple jerseys. But obviously, that's not the case with Kopecky being Belgian champ. So it wasn't an issue here to Thank recognize who is who. Thank God, indeed. But um, a bit later, that group got taken back and another group started to attack. Uh, they got away with, like, I think eight riders, including Mavi Garcia, Eric. We had Chapman, on Dijk, and so forth. And eventually, that group once again came back to the peloton because the peloton started splitting up on the sandy sections. And peloton split into two parts. The first part moved its way up, and that second part was gone for the rest of the race. So that never really came back. But... None of the really big names were missing out here, I felt like, because eventually it led to a group of 15 leaders. Mariano Vos, Lotte Kopecky, Mavi Garcia, Black, Van Dijk, Van Vleuten, Cecilia Terpludwig, we had Niewedoma, Stiltins, we had Follering, Elisa Longoborghini, Van der Bregen, Spratt, Moman Passio, and Cavalli. So multiple riders from multiple teams, for example, Cavalli and Terpludwig in there as well. And obviously, quite a few names of SD Works as well. So, yeah, those teams had multiple riders. Trek as well with Van Dijk and Longo Borghini. And then if we look further into the race, we we actually started seeing some decent attacks at a certain point. And it all kind of started with a move by Chantal van der Broek-Black on the uh, right side of the road. And Annemiek van Vleuten was the first person to react to that. And I felt like at that point, van Vleuten showed that she did not have the legs to catch Chantal von der Broek-Blag there. She, there was just not enough energy in there. And it looked like she was trying. So either she completely faked that or not, depending on what happens in the rest of the race, of course. But at that point, I was like, oh my God, von Vleuten might actually not be where I expect her to be today. And she could not close von der Broek-Blag or decided not to close von der Broek-Blag there. Kopecky was the next one to bridge, and eventually that attack by Block was taken back. But, well, it looked like von Vleuten threw a bit of sand, let's say in the Strade Bianche form here, she threw a bit of sand in the eyes of the others and myself here, because I was not expecting her to attack at any point at that point after that 
a bit of a rejection to trying to catch Chantal van der Brublag there. And surprisingly, on the section that fits her the best, an uphill section, uh, also gravel roads again, she decided to attack. And, well, it's the typical Van Vleuten attack, pacing hard at the front of Peloton on an uphill section so that others need to perform extreme watts to try and follow. And it looked like a few could follow, and that included Kopecky first, who seemed to be one of the stronger riders in the race at that point once again after earlier on being in the breakaway. And then also Mariana Voss. But Kopecky unfortunately had a puncture, which is a sad part here. At first I was like, oh my god, she's yeah. she's got a chasse patate, as they say it in uh in Dutch and French. And eventually she had to drop back because of that puncture and was completely out of the race. But yeah, two riders were off, Mariana Voss, and we also had the uh Van Vleuten off the road. And at that point, did you think that attack was going to make the decisive move for the race, or do you think that the second group was going to be able to catch back up? No, I didn't think it was going to stick because for a few reasons. So what are we with like, oh, 12 Ks to go, Benji, 11 Ks to go. There'd been a few softening attacks, as Benji mentioned, from Lundenbrook, Black and Co. But the leaders were all pretty much keeping their power to dry. Van der Breggen, Lisa Bo- uh, Lisa Longo-Borghini had attacked once, but she can attack multiple times. So the fact that people were fresh behind and there were so many favourites, as well as SD Works having yeah. numbers, having uh, following Van der Breggen and Chantal van den Broek Black and Mulman Passio as well, uh, which is kind of terrifying, as well as <laughs> probably got their whole team <laughs> They had the whole team in the group just about. Uh, they had those four riders. And as well, Mariana Voss was sitting on. So do you think that was the right thing to do for Mariana Voss to sit on Van Vleuten at that point with 10, 11 Ks to go? They've gone clear of the SD Works, Trek, FDJ, uh, I guess, power structure behind them, neither Voss nor Van Vleuten having other teammates. And I think it's pretty clear that Van Vleuten doesn't have the legs right now to the level she did last year where she was just imperious. If you were Voss, would you have sat on Benji? Would you have contributed 30%, 50-50? What would you have done Or if you were her DS? Well, at least 30%, I feel. Perhaps 50%, I don't know. I think that Mariana Voss has a pretty good uphill kick as well. So I wouldn't be scared in the situation of Mariana Voss here. Perhaps it looked like she kind of expected Van Vleuten to be on a higher level or something when she was with her, or she had trouble already on the climb before and decided, oh, if I if I end up having to beat Van Vleuten in the end, I need to have energy more, then that decision is understandable. But it looked like she was in okay shape, and it looked like they both were in relatively okay shape at that point. So if I was, yeah, if I was Mariana Vos in that situation, I likely would have made the decision to work together with Van Vleuten, because as you say, as the works is behind, that's the main competitor. Like the entire team yeah. is the main competitor for you, because that is the the team you need to kind of kick out of the race to have a one v one battle against the others. And you are in that situation. Then you've got a bit of a gap, and it was a pretty serious gap at a certain point. I think twenty seconds max there. Yeah. So fifteen. Yeah. It was solidly yeah. fifteen with ten k's to go, and then I think Van Vleuten maybe just stopped pacing so hard. I, I don't know. I mean. Another thing I didn't understand behind was a lot of the team teammates or riders like Nui Adoma and uh, Spratt, I think without teammates in the group, were helping SD Works or doing a lot of the pacing, particularly yeah. Nui Adoma. And if I'm them, nah, I'm saying, I'm looking <laughs> at Bob the Bregan and saying, no, you, you're going to have to chase Voss yeah. and Van Vleuten. Um, you have to. And... I think that was a bit of a mistake from Nivea Doma, who made it have cost herself a podium position for this race. But either Van Vleuten chilled out and was like, oh, I'm going to just end up bringing Voss to the line or I'm wasting my time here, or maybe the coordinated chase, the chase behind was too coordinated. But they got caught with nine Ks to go, and we had a group of 12 leading into Siena. Um, all with all, pretty much all the favourites. They stayed together for a few more Ks, and I thought... SD Works were going to ride it in Benji. I thought mm-hmm. what I thought they were going to do was pace with Van der Black on the front and then in up to Siena, keep it all together and then up to the final climb, 
set pace on the climb really hard with Vollering and then either Van der Breggen could let her wheel go or Van der Breggen could attack over the top of her. I think that was a pretty like fail safe strategy. Yeah, exactly, like Flesh for Lawn, except this year they're on the same team. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and it was pretty big successful at Flesh for Lawn instead of Underbreak under under having to pace the whole time. But they didn't elect to do that. Now, what they and what they did make sense too, they were like, well, Follering and Van der Breggen are going to be super strong on the climb. Let's we still got riders with multiple teammates in this group. Cavalli with uh, Utrup Ludwig. Utrup Ludwig got to respect her on a climb like that. Super light, good as Giro de Emilia. Uh, Van Vleuten's still there. Voss might have still been there. Nui Adoma. So SD Works were like, let's use our strength in numbers. And they attacked again with six Ks to go with Chantal van der Broek Black, winner of Flanders last year, winner of World Championships previously. And I think SD Works were saying, well, van der Broek Black is not, our, not even our first or second best on the final climb, so let's spend her energy. But then Elisa Longoborghini bridged to her really quickly. Yeah. The Italian champion has started to work for her. So if you're SD Works... You think they did the right thing, Benji, then telling Chantal van der Black to sit on Elisa Longo Borghini. And was Ellen van Dijk still in that group? Uh, I think she uh, was. Van Dijk was still in that group, yes. She even Do you tried think Longo Borghini made the right decision? Um, I believe that, yeah, I believe she did. Yeah, I uh, think I so too. she did make the right decision to bridge up. I think that she also made the right decision to start working with van der Black. I... If I was in the position of SD Works, I'd start to panic right now because you've got Chantal van der Broek with Elisa longo in the front group. On paper, I'd give that to Elisa longo But the benefit Everyone was... Everyone did. Yeah. SD Works did. Yeah. Uh, but, like, yep. I feel like I in this situation forward. that if van der Broek obviously forces longo to do most of the work, then it's going to benefit... Van der Broek Black, but still, I would still not trust the situation. And like you say, as D Works didn't need her, they started attacking, right? Well, they started first, they started soft. It got out to 20 seconds, and SD Works yeah. were like, whoa, 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 whoa. 20 seconds <laughs> with three, four Ks. This was supposed to just be a softening attack to make Marta Cavalli a Nui Adoma chase. This wasn't supposed to have maybe our biggest contender bridge across and now be clear 20 seconds ahead this is not going to plan and i think now you could characterize it as sd works doing what the dutch women did in the 2016 or 18 world championships can't remember or maybe it was the european championships where they they chase sd works because that forces longer borghini to keep working hard with vulnerable black sitting on if SD Works stopped pacing, Nui Adoma was tired. She was not working anymore. Yeah. Cavalli, well, we'll talk about FTJ in a second. But if SD Works don't chase, that gap goes out to 50, 45 seconds. Longo Borghini then has a kilometer before the Flamme Rouge to maybe recover before the climb. And that's not a good that's not good for Chantal van der Black. So it's either genius 5,000 IQ for SD Works <laughs> that they chase to create the illusion of pressure and to keep it close on Longo Borghini, or, which is what I think was happening, Van der Breggen and the Vollering realised they didn't have a good situation, that they, not the ideal, opt- it's a fine situation, but not the best situation to win the race with Van der Broek Black up the road with Longo Borghini. So then Van der Breggen pulled for a bit, and then Vollering attacked, um, trying to bridge across. That didn't really go anywhere. We've got two Ks to go. And then... For FDJ, who've got Cavalli and Ultra yeah. Ludwig in the group, they started. attacked with Cavalli. You, I know you've got a, I know you've got a strong view on this. Two Ks to go, Cavalli attacking, not pace. Yeah, I, uh, I believe that I've, I've shouted at the screen for the last two and a half kilometers because I was like, Cavalli's in that group. Ultra Ludwig has been riding this race pretty easily. It looked like so she was not in trouble at. Yep. Many of the situations, she was not in a situation where she was with Von Vleuten or Marianne Voss. Perhaps it was a decision to stay with Anna van der Breggen and such. But I feel that in the last five kilometers, we see that Cavalli is in that group. She attacks three, four times, I think, from that group with spiky attacks where she's getting a bit of a gap, then she gets caught. Get a bit of a gap, then she gets caught. If during that whole situation, instead of doing those attacks, she paces, then 
they don't even get to the point where they have 20 seconds because they only got to 20 seconds because there was a situation where those two riders were gone. And then the group behind, for at least like half a minute, nobody was pacing. Nobody. We had Anna van der Breggen at the front of the group just, yeah, obviously stopping the pace. And then you would expect Cavalli to move to the front and start pacing, but she decided to move on the right side of the road. She wanted to attack. She got stuck behind the rider at a certain point, could not attack in that situation. But she should not have been trying to attack, should have been trying to pace. I don't get it. Like, she's there. I'm, I'm going to make a bit of a horse show because Cavalli, of course. But two riders, betting on two riders, betting on two horses is not ideal in this situation. You've got to sacrifice one for the other. And if you're in a situation like FDG was in these last five kilometers, you sacrifice Cavalli, in my opinion, for Utrecht Ludwig. So you keep the tempo high. Obviously, it's not an ideal situation because you're bridging up Anna van der Breggen and Demi Vollering and so forth all to that final climb. But it's the only situation in which you as a team still have a chance of winning the race because at this point you don't. And yeah, I believe that they blew that and I believe that they could have had a better result if if they didn't. Uh, if they, well, I agree, I agree. And then going to the last 1,500 metres, this climb, it starts gradually. It, it sneaks up on riders. You know, they had a 15-second gap with 1,500 metres to go. Lisa Longoborghini leading out Chantal, Chantal Vandenbroek-Black, who's not helped her for five or six kilometres uh, up to this point. The climb's gradual, and 15 seconds is not that big for this climb. If you blow up on this climb, you, you can get caught if there's a concerted chase behind you. Going into it, I thought, oh, no. I thought maybe SD Works had done a quick step 2015. Um, they got onto the climb. Van der Breggen starts pacing really hard behind them the minute they get onto the climb. But Elisa Longoborghini leads Chantal, Chantal van der Breggen onto the steep section, up to the 16% pinch into Siena. And... Vandenbroek Black just absolutely dusted her. <laughs> the, the Flanders winner last year yep. picked the steepest moment. I think she got a read on Elisa Longoborghini, kicked to her right hand side up to Siena, Piazza del Campo, and put a massive gap into her very, very quickly. I thought Van der Breggen was even going to be starting to close down um, Chantal Vandenbroek Black, but she wasn't, she wasn't able to. It was still a very solid gap. At the finish, I think she did the climb at a decent pace. So Chantal Vandenbroek Black, the surprise winner of Strada Bianca 2021 Women's Edition. Longa Borghini holding on to second, seven seconds behind. And that is just a reflection of how difficult this race is and even the last seven kilometers that even if on paper you're the better climber, the lighter, smaller rider for that finish, if you've been having to do a lot of work, and Shanta van der Broek Black had to do a lot of work, a fair bit of work, but it was earlier attacks in the 10, 15 k to go region. You know, you can't, you can still lose this race. Van der Breggen third, two SD works, two Dutch riders in the podium, nine seconds behind van der Broek Black. Van Vleuten kept riding hard to the line and yep. came fourth, just ahead of Ludwig, who sat up, who should have got fourth. She came fifth. Vollering sixth. Mariana Vos, second group. 7th, 23 seconds back. Cavalli, 8th, 27 seconds back, proving Denji's point that even if she had bridged, she wouldn't have been good enough on the climb anyway. Nuvia Dome at 9th and Ellen van Dijk, 10th. Um, and just, I was going to say, Benji, I thought they were SD Works were going to quick step 2015. It, it all ended <laughs> up rosy for them. But, yep. and I was saying that live in, in the, um, to people on Instant Messenger and, I don't think I was wrong. This is a quote from Chantal Vandenbroek Black after the finish. I'm surprised and extremely happy. This was not the plan, but my win is due to teamwork. <laughs> I had the instruction from the team to not ride at the front. I didn't think I'd drop Elisa Longoborghini in the final climb, but I did. <laughs> this is a very big day in my cycling Genius. career. So I love it. I love it. So it just yeah. it goes to show that she had fantastic legs. She said that after the race, but... Um, I feel like SD Works played with fire today, Benji, and it could have backfired. Um, but <laughs> yes. what an addition. Any any other tactical things you'd want to point out that SD Works did well, other teams didn't do well, um, et cetera? How, how did you think this final 10 kilometers could have played out differently? Or what, No, sorry. 
the point I'm trying to make is, Benji, what could someone else have done to make SD Works not win today? Hmm. <laughs> That's like, actually a difficult it's, question. It's, it's a big it's, question. <laughs> if I had the answer, I'd be the yes at, at one of those themes at this point. But Trek would, I Trek would think, give you a contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've got the answer, but I do have the answer to the fact that, well, it's not an answer, but it's just an obvious fact that I'm going to once again prevail here. I'm going to uh, announce that once again, it's a teamwork and the over-dominance by SD Works that brings them All to these situations. Because... It's the only team that has four or five riders in those like, kind of groups up, up there always. And every time they do that, they've got so many candidates to punch in an attack on the left, punch in an attack on the right. And the other teams just don't have enough riders to combat that. And there's the go there's back such fishy case. Difference. Yeah. Not even the finish. Yeah. Sending Nee Fisher Black into a break with Kopecky, you've got to respect those two riders. And that meant, I presume, we didn't see the images, I presume they got to chill and didn't have to chase. So that, yep. that kept their, their riders then four in the finish fresh for the finale. Um, so it's all day dominance. And I don't know what you can do. I, honestly, I think Elisa Longaborghini played it right. I think on a different day, she might have been better than... Um, yep. Yeah, better than Van der Mook. Like the problem was, Benji... If if she waited another, if she if she eased up in the last fifteen hundred to um, get some rest. Well, she only beat Van der Breggen by two seconds, so that's the problem. You rest yep. up, you get caught by Anna, Brunner, Anna Van der Breggen, murder hoy dominance that applies here to the same finish in Siena. So I think Trek did a pretty good job. Uh, Voss, do you think Voss has lost a bit, Benji? Um, and it's she's not able she's just not at that level anymore and maybe needs a an easier climb and an easier race and more of a sprint finish yeah perhaps that's the answer to this uh, perhaps the attack of Vosan van Vleuten would have been the attack that could have brought this race forward with SD works being in more trouble there because in that situation if Vos actually worked like we mentioned earlier then that group would have stayed way longer but obviously that did not happen and the rest came back. And that's the only situation in which SD Works was not at the front of the race today. So uh, I think that's the only moment that they could have sidelined SD Works a bit. But then again, they've got four riders at the back, possible to chase, then yeah. I'm I don't think sure that would have won the race, but I think yeah. it would have forced forced SD Works with 15Ks yeah. to go or 12Ks to go to do some work and burn Vandenbroek Black or Vollering. Because Vollering didn't look crash hot today. Yep. Um, she she got beaten by Ludwig. I think Vollering, yeah, it would have forced SD Works to do something and maybe another team could have attacked. I think Ludwig did exactly what she needed to do. I, I, obviously, she yep. didn't ride it for fourth. But for Ludwig to win, she has to mark van der Breggen all day. Smart. That's exactly what I would do if I was her. And hope I get lucky or something goes my way in the finish where you know she's going to be i think top three if they all came together after an easy race on that sienna finish she's in it with a really really good shot for the podium um so i think she played it right today and i agree with your comments about cavalli i think if cavalli had ridden it in benji then they catch alicia longer borghini then van der Breggen probably still comes second and then ludwig and should have been in. yeah then ludwig would have been sprinting for third for the podium Yep. Um, so I think that actually did make a difference, but pretty exciting. I mean, not pretty. I, th I thought that was a really, really exciting yep. uh, last 25 Ks, Benji, or 20 Ks that we got to watch. Uh, shame it wasn't more, but um, yeah, a lot, certainly. like a, just a, a lot tactically to think about. Like, do you prefer these big groups compared to the men's is usually uh, sometimes three or four riders? I don't know, because like it, it depends on the edition as well. I think last year we had an extreme edition in Strade Men's. True. Uh, women's, women's Strade as well, to be honest, where it's just singular riders everywhere. And a few years ago, 2017, we had a Strade Men's edition where it was basically an entire group that went into the last 10 kilometers and Kwiatkowski decided to attack. And yeah, the race was pretty much over. So I don't know. It, it really depends on the decision. I, I prefer the 
ones where we can either go for something extremely cool happening, like last year in Strade Mens, which wouldn't, was not necessarily the most tactical victory by Venat. He was just plainly the strongest in an, a race of attrition. And then you have something like today in the women's race, where it's more tactical. Like Those two are the two I like. I don't really have a preference one over the other. That's that's what I like seeing. I just don't like a boring race. And we didn't get that just today, so that's me. awesome. Yeah. This women's race is exactly the same as Men's Strade 2013 when Liquid Gas sent Moreno Moza <laughs> yes. up the road when they had Peter Sagan. He was like the shortest favorite, i.e. Anna van der Breggen. And they sent Moreno Moza in a break up the road. It meant Sagan got to sit in and chill. And then Moza ended up winning. <laughs> it's really surprisingly attacked because he's Moza then sat on the breakaway guys. Because yes. same like Van der Broek Black did on Elisa Longo Borghini, dusted them all off in the finish, and then Sagan like absolutely launched up the final climb and got on the podium as well. I think um, so. It's it's a tried and trusted tactic if you've got team strength and the strongest rider in the race. It seems to be, and this is what Wout Van Aert doesn't have, and this is why SD Works are going to continue being so successful this season. It's because this tactic is almost impossible to combat. If you can throw riders in a break or in attacks who are not just sacrificial lambs, who are good enough to win the race themselves, and you've still got the strongest rider behind, I mean, I'm going to have to go and do some deep dives if I'm and think about how other riders can win this race. <laughs> I'll win races if they're not named SD Works because, yeah, it's tough. But I hope you enjoyed this recap. We really, we really enjoyed doing it, and uh, we'll see you for the next one. Ciao.